Summer is over. The temperature is getting low. According to sources, the MCG is the place to go. Because next weekend, for another time, at about 45 minutes past one, for the first time in 2024, it's going to start raining, Sharon's, because footy is back, baby. This is The Sash, definitely not the official podcast of the Essen Football Club. I am your host, Rob, here with you for another year, our eighth year of Don's Footy on The Sash podcast. And joining me is Jesse. Hello, mate. G'day. Good to be back. Very nice beginning to your potential poem that you had written there, but... Do you know what song that is? No. That is It's Raining Men. Really? <laughs> I, I was in I was in Coles today doing my shop this morning and It's Raining Men was playing and I was just singing the lyrics to myself and I'm like... <laughs> For the first time in 2024... Yeah. It's there's gonna no stop raining. Yeah, there's Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, I was real. I was like, "Can I just shoot on that in?" Yeah, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Don't mind it. There you go. We're back. Footy's back. I'm glad to have you here. Um, for those who wanted to hear the the dark, twisted bind that is murder on our first show, unfortunately, it was a laid out. Um, but he'll be back, week. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. And we're we're glad to have him. But um, it's that beautiful time of the year because even though look, there has been some practice games, the real thing hasn't started. So you can't be let down just yet. You're full of hope. You're full of excitement. I don't know. It's probably one of my favorite times of the year in Melbourne, to be honest. So how are you feeling? Great. It's always good when we're actually not playing <laughs> games worth four points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, very optimistic, but also just trying to settle. I think mm. the St Kilda game was good for yeah. us. We needed that. Just, just a to reminder. settle up. Just a reminder. All of the training reports that I've been reading on Blitz, just everyone <laughs> getting around the boys so hard, and I was pumped for yeah. that. Left work, went to Moorabbin, and uh, I left at three-quarter time. Yeah, and I was like, I've, I've, I've been here far too many times, and yeah. I've never actually been to Moorabbin. So, but metaphorically, uh, it, uh, you know, I've been there before. So yes. it, was a, it was a good peg down. Yeah. Um, you said you're optimistic. Do you think you're – are you more glass half full than half empty coming into this year? Um, it's, a, it's probably difficult to say one or the other. I would say I'm probably a lot more realistic as to where our list is at right. than I have been over previous years. And, yeah, of course, you know, you, you can't not be – I guess to answer your question, half glass full at the start of the year. Mm. And the way that we played footy against Geelong, which we'll touch on, I, I assume at some point, was definitely optimistic. Mm. There was a resembled game plan there and some noticeable ball movement improvements. So it appears that we haven't completely lost where we were at, but that St Kilda game was scary because mm. it was like, what, our fourth 10-goal loss in a row or something. <laughs> something I'm like, like oh, that. my God, <laughs> it's happening again. Nothing's changed. Yeah. I, the thing I hate with practice matches and I really struggle with is that there's there's one part of me that's like, there's like the logical part of my brain that's like, no, 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 they're trying things out and they're just, you know, getting into it and they're, you know, making sure they know the final plays and all this stuff they want to do and they're just testing it and, you know, a simulation version, practice match, whatever you want to call it. But then there's the nuffy in me who just gets filthy that we lose. And it's really hard for me to be in that zone where I'm like, yeah, I know, but also, fuck, and, but, oh, oh, and like, I'm just, that's me it's watching amazing. it. Yeah. And yeah, it was, <laughs> look, I didn't enjoy watching that game. They're really funny, those first practice games, because like, they're not official, but the clubs do them, but they're on Fox, but they're not really filmed properly. And the commentary team are just randoms. And, like, the whole thing is a bit of a schmozzle from, like, yeah. game to production. Everything was bad about it. And I just kind of walked away being like, mm, I just kind of, f- f- let's just forget that happened and we'll just focus on the Geelong practice match and that's what I'll yeah. you know, glean how good we are off, I think. I was getting fully stuck into some St Kilda supporters over there, though, <laughs> hilariously. <laughs> Why? They were all just dogging Gresh. Oh, and they're like, oh, yeah, he's Gresham. He'll just yeah. butcher it. Mm. And I'm like, you all don't have anything good. I remember turning to this guy and said, you, I don't think I've heard a single good word from you St. Kilda supporters about Gresham. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. Good player, good player. I'm like, yeah, good. Shut <laughs> up. I give him a bit of respect. Like he's mm. a, statistically a, a pretty elite player. So mm. I think maybe they're all a little bit salty about him leaving. 
Yeah, I guess some of them are. I mean, I I, I got a good Saints mate who was like he said to me, he's like, I'm happy for him to stay, but I'm also not like going to be devastated if he goes, sort of thing. Where it was like, you know, it's not as though like it was Jack Steele or someone. Mm. It's like, yeah, it sucks, but I'm okay with it. Whereas I think we definitely benefit more from what he brings versus what they lose. If I well, they were saying, sense. yeah, it does. That guy said pretty much the same thing. He said we we didn't need any more small forwards. We we actually have an abundance of them, whereas we needed more we need one. midfielders yeah. and you guys needed yeah. small forwards. So it, it worked out mm. well. I, in, on, but look, statistically, you know, he's a bit of a freak, Gresham. He does some good things on the, on the staff seat. So I guess now we just got to see what, what actually happens. Because I, like, I feel like we've really got, in, in the small sample size, we've got really a good look of what he possesses in the really good stuff he does and then the really bad stuff he does, particularly like spraying it at goal or running into a goal post. You're kind of like, hmm, what are we going to get week in, week out? Because yeah. I can see I can see both. I can see the For good sure. stuff and the bad stuff. I'm kind of like, hmm, what, is, what are we going to be getting with this one? <laughs> yeah. But no, look, I, I, th- I think he'll be a big improvement as, as will. He makes stuff guys. happen. You yeah. can tell. And that's, I don't care if you kick a few out in the full. Just- yeah. Kick just less stop, out just, in the full. Just don't run to the goalpost. And this is not the first time I'm going to bring this up. Don't take, and my first F bomb of the season, don't take a fucking check side shot 15 metres out from goal, Matt, Matt Guelphie. Yeah. Please. My God. I don't care. It's a practice game. Damn. None of that. I'm, I'm getting to an old man. He's None lost of that. it. Yeah. Drop punts. Yeah, correct. It's drop punts or nothing. Yeah, back in my day. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's black boots and drop punts. Correct. And yeah. pull your. Bloody shock shot. Pull, pull your socks Tuck up. your shirt in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't have it. I can't have it. Um, second practice game, a lot better. A lot better. Mm. I feel like we actually, like, because it was close. To, I mean, it kind of was our full strength side, you know, bar a couple of guys who may be injured. Um, and we got a very good look at it for, I'd say, for three quarters. And then it looks like they kind of put the cue in the rack. And then yeah. that's where I went into my, like, oh, but they're resting guys, but we're losing and I'm upset again. Yeah, you know? correct. I, I went into that mindset. Um, what did you like? Let's start there about the Geelong what game. Did, what did I like about the Geelong game? Um, hmm, who do I want to pick out? I mean, I love Zach Reed. Oh, how I'm, good was Reedy? I'm, I'm like, I really need to like temper expectations because I feel like it's going to be another one of those years where he's like every year. I feel like on this show we have our guy that we're all collectively on. And some years it, it, it works out well. Most years it probably doesn't. But yeah. I've just got this feeling that we're all going to ride him so hard and then something will happen. But He's a better bet than yeah. Josh Begley that we were <laughs> the on fridge. three the or fridge. four years ago. We were yeah. big on the, yeah, on the, on the fridge. And yeah. I feel like this is probably a safer bet. Yeah, he's better than Tom Cutler. Um, but, yeah, I look, I really like what he brings. Uh, he's just – his skills for a guy who seems to be – 2,000 centimetres tall. He's, I think he grows an inch every week. Like, like it's quite remarkable for a, a big guy to have that. And we knew the hype when he got drafted, and then we just haven't had a chance to see it. But now I'm sort of sitting there going, huh, maybe this might be it. Maybe, you know, touch wood, touch whatever you need to, listeners and, and viewers, that this is the guy who we're hoping is going to be there for the next decade mm. um, and is going to be – the reliable defender that we crave, yeah, um, and that's what I'm hoping because it looks it looks really good, and I'm really really keen to see what becomes of the the Reed Mackay duo. Mm. I've I'm trying to remember what podcast I said it on. I've I've recorded a bunch of podcasts with a few guests that I'm putting putting out next week or maybe this week for premium listeners, and I'm trying to remember who I said it to. But anyway, I said to someone that I'm like, there's going to be a teething period between those guys, and where you get a bit of a mismatch situation or, you know, a bit of finger pointing like, oh, you're meant to be on him, you're meant to be on him. Because, like, they haven't really played much together. Mm. I think we saw that when Tom Hawkins was on Nick Martin for that brief moment and he marked and kicked a goal. And you're like, surely someone else is meant to be on Tom Hawkins, not, yeah. not Nick Martin. So yeah. there's going to be that teething period. But, yeah, I think I'm really excited to see what, on paper, looks like we've solved that defensive issue of our key backs. Yeah. It looks like we've solved it. Now we just got to make sure they stay out in the field and we see that. So that's probably my biggest thing that I am I took from that Geelong game and I'm probably most excited about. What, what about you? Yeah, Reedy was pretty amazing. He His ability to kick those almost 45-degree kicks but mm. drop punts, mm. those Zach Merritt-type kicks, you can mm. tell he's got some serious vision and finesse. Very composed, 
But yeah, I, I do tend to agree with you. I don't want to get too excited. He's definitely got the skill set to be, be a generational fullback for the next 10 years for the football club. But obviously injury concerns for both him and Mackay throughout their career mm. have been prominent. And now it's appearing Ridley is having similar concerns, yeah. which as we all know, we are training on an Indian burial ground <laughs> <Yes>. and <laughs> I, uh, I hope that the, um, uh, the Indian witch doctors <laughs> are uh, going to give us the the favour, the rub of the green this year. Because mm. if, if look, Ridley, Reed, and Mackay play 17, 18 games, mm. I think we'd be a really good chance of going pretty deep mm. into the year and certainly give the the team a really good opportunity to win a final. Yeah. Before, before we delve into the Ridley industry, uh, what else from that Geelong game did you take away that you really liked? Parish man, he looked good. He looked elite. He looked. He looked at his. Was it twenty twenty two or Australian twenty twenty one? Yeah, twenty twenty two, I believe. Yeah, he looked. He looked back to that best Darcy Parish that just has a serious tank on him. He's running all game, clearance beast, um, hitting targets. He was hitting some back twenty score involvements. Yeah, just doing scoring goals as well. Yeah, exactly. So doing doing all the stuff that we've seen him do in that one good year, and then you know a couple of bad years with with that calf problem that he's had. So yeah, it's like, are we going to see that twenty twenty one year again? Because if if he can deliver that, yeah, on top of all the other things we're hoping can happen, then maybe this is an okay year. Maybe it is but- for sure. The, well, the reports are that based on all the training reports that I've been reading, he, he a lot of the people down that have been getting down to training feel like he's gone to another level, and I feel like a part of that would be he's just bigger size wise than he would have been three years ago or two years ago. Mm. So I have no doubt. Again, you know, if Parish can play eighty five percent of the games this year. He'll go deep into, I would say, Brownlow likelihood, like he did in that 2021 year. But, you know, if you've got him and Merritt both in tandem, I also, I guess, in in conjunction with that, have to get – I'm really excited about Goldie. Look, Goldie has made a significant difference to our stoppage craft. We actually won the stoppage clearances and the contested possession against Mm. Geelong, which is insane to think that we beat Geelong in stoppage (laughs) and in clearances, uh, uh, in in contested possession. But you can just see the way that gold, we haven't, it it really goes to show how much we have lacked a tap Ruckman Mm. for the last five or six years. When Mm. you see Goldie, and look, Bell Chambers was great tap tap Ruckman back when he was fit. He He was okay. He had his moments, yeah. Paddy Ryder was obviously an elite tap ruckman. We didn't see him for as long as we would have God, that was a long hoped. Time ago. Yeah. <laughs> David Hill, pretty good, but again, really, really long time ago. Think about it from now until then. Mm. Draper's not a stoppage tap ruckman. He hasn't developed that craft as not yet to be, you know, mm. in the top five stoppage ruckman mm. in the comp. And geez, it makes a difference. Like you mm. just see the way that he can maneuver himself in that contest, but he also becomes a second midfielder. He's mm. great around yeah. the ground. He, I can't believe he's 35 years old. It's, it's insane. It's wild, yeah. It, it really is wild. And I, I, I guess my biggest question is how many games can he do? Because I feel at, at his age, and I'm fairly certain his last season with North Melbourne that he did have, have to have a few rests along the way, and I think is probably going to be the case. Sure. Um, Get beaten up in the rock. Big oh, time. you do. It's probably the most demanding position on the ground. So, yeah, yeah. and I, I think he just brings a level of intelligence that we might not have had with previous Ruckman. Like, Flip had obviously been around the game for a while, but it obviously isn't at Goldstein's level. And then Draper and Brian are, are children mm. for, com- comparatively. Um, so, yeah, you just sort of I, – I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall for those kind of conversations that, you know, him, Parrish and Merritt and Setterfield – what Durham would have about mm. how they're setting up at these stoppages. Like I'd love to hear the ins and outs of what they're talking about because I feel like Goldie would now be a big presence in that conversation. Yeah, you know, going, oh no, I think this might work better. Let's try doing this, you know, mm. etc. Um, on Parish, yeah, I, I think his key is just staying on the park because 
obviously 2021 he played every single game and then 22 and 23 he played 16 and 18 games. Um, so if he's playing 20 plus and he's fit and he's doing everything right, then yeah. I think He'll it, keep us in a lot of games. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he will. And if his kicking is improving and with the work that he's having with the coaches, if it does improve and it gets better, um, cause he has been maligned by supporters and us as well. We've, we've all been there. We've all been there. Mm. I mean, I think you were on the train for him not to re-sign last year, I'm pretty sure. To dub <laughs> I you definitely in. was. To dub you in. I will take culpability yeah. for my actions. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we are just hoping it's a, a strong year from him. Um, we'll it's talk probably about- why they brought Rath in, though. They heard me talking about Parrish's <laughs> terrible kicking and just thought, <laughs> You know what? We actually can't have our yeah. supporters on the biggest <laughs> Essendon podcast dishing Parish like this. So, you know what, Jesse, yeah, you're we're, right. We're getting the best biomechanic coach in to teach Parish how to kick yeah, again. Because yeah, because people obviously listen to the drill that comes out, out of our mouths. Um, Naturally. Let's talk about Rids. Uh, yeah, Devo. Absolutely, Devo. I think, I think if you surveyed the faithful and you said who who are our top three most important players i would say almost every supporter would have him either second or third yeah one or two some would have yeah mate, as, uh, as well yeah i mean i think merit's obviously number one yeah just in terms of who's like probably best player still but yeah i think most people would be having him second and third um alongside a couple of other people but yeah it's a worry that it's a re-injury of the same issue We've seen in previous years with guys, say like a Langford, for example, where end of the year before, like he had the hammy issue, end of the year did the hammy, does the whole preseason, comes in, does it right away, and then he's got he's just busted for the whole season. This is obviously a bit different to that. Uh, I believe that they've not as uh, said high grade. Yeah, it's a low grade. I believe they've sort of said we're sort of talking, you know, three to four rounds before he could come back. Um, but just yeah, anytime they're re-entering an old thing you know, an old injury that is the concern so look uh we probably i'll say probably we probably won't miss him that much against hawthorne but against the sydney against the st kilda um is it port we have in round four yeah is that the gather round game against port massive loss and it's going to be really interesting to see who's able to step up. Like, I think we all expect it to be Laverde who's going to make sure – who'll have a spot locked down now. But, you know, pressure's on Reed, pressure's on Mackay now to really step up in that intercepting role. Yeah, and Laverde's been really poor in the two practice games, much below his usual level. The one thing I noticed about Laverde is just his decision-making with ball. It just hurts us. Big time, really. There's so many. Op- and look, in fairness to that St. Kilda game, everyone was shocking with their everyone disposal. Was, everyone was crap. But what we are lacking is composure and good ball use out of our back line. So, yeah, it doesn't really seem like we have many other options at this point in time. The only other option they may consider is Cox playing mm. Ridley's role. Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting one. Like, I, I still wonder if he... I was, I wonder if he'll be picked in the team and still and kind of float between defense and wing because he's he's spent a bit of time at half back. He was floating back there quite a lot um, in the Geelong game. He was playing Jeremy Cameron, which I think is a very interesting learning experience for him. Like yeah, Cameron, my God, you see that spoil how soft he was yeah. on one of Cameron's marks. Yeah, he was afraid. Yeah, he was afraid to put his knee into Jeremy mm. Cameron. Yeah. I'm like, Come on, man. And then there was one where Seriously. Cameron just kind of turned him inside out and you're like, oh, that's just a, you know, a experienced forward against a very young defender. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, we'll pick our round one team later, but he's, I think he's one of the players who's in that probably group of maybe you could say sort of seven or eight players, although maybe with a few injuries now, it's maybe only six or seven. Um, who are probably fighting for those four bench spots. And I think he's one of them right now. Yeah, I think um, you're right. And I'm kind of like, where's he going to go? You know, where's he going to be playing? Is he? Are we going to see him mostly on the wing? Are we going to see him mostly in defence? Um, did you listen to my interview with him that I did a couple I did. of weeks ago? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, I haven't even spoken. It about was that. quite a good interview. The he was very honest, which I which I really and rated. you asked him. I remember there was one question that you asked him, which was pretty tough. Yeah, but it was good to hear. And I remember you said, "Do you feel 
something along the lines of, do you feel that as a result of you not playing as much and these uh, injuries that you've had, you obviously were a lot more confident in your first year with taking that first option and you've been a lot, well, not a lot, but you said you've been slower with making decision and more cautious. Do you think confidence is something that is important to you? And he Mm. pretty much said yes, uh, which you can tell it Mm. makes a lot of sense. I feel like Jones is in the same basket. Mm. I feel like a lot of first year players come in with a heap of confidence Mm. to be really honest and have a really good, first five or six rounds. Second year blues, I think they call it, yeah. And then you start actually realizing that you kind of, you've just, well, you're really, I would say, coming off your draft year, you would have no higher confidence in yourself as a person, Mm. right? It's the pinnacle of what you can achieve at that point in time in your life and you've Mm. got there and you're playing freely and it's just about whether or not players can get that confidence back. Mm. But the thing is, I, I, I do genuinely see improvement in Cox and Jones, mm. particularly against Geelong. Uh, and I've been seeing incremental improvements in Cox in all the games that he's been playing. A lot of people have been a little bit harsher mm. to critique him, but I feel like he's been standing up in tackles. He's been tackling better. He's been spoiling. He hasn't mm. been turning the ball over as much. He's been slightly quicker with his de- decision-making. He definitely... I- Watching that Geelong game and the times that he had it, I mean, there was a there was a mark he took on half back. I'm trying to remember if they, it was an intercept or if we just kicked it to him. But either or, I remember him getting it, and immediately I was like, "All right." And my head, I started counting. I was like, "How long is it going to take?" And like, he actually reacted really quick. He looked, he saw that there was someone open, and he gave the hand straight away. Yeah. I was like, obviously, practice game stakes are low, but. I was like, I feel like 12, 24 months ago that that, that that would have taken a lot longer to happen. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that he's he's feeling a lot better. It looks uh, like and a it was great. Yeah, and it was it was really nice to chat with him and it was pretty cool. Yeah. The club to uh to let me come down. Who else to, did you have interview wise again? Uh Laverty, who we just spoke about. Um and Nick Hine, who is just 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 the biggest bro, man. He's so chill. He like, is a very I, I, relaxed guy. Oh man, I'd happily drink a few cans with with Andy. I reckon he'd be good value. Yeah, he seems like a real real good bloke. Bit of like a country boy. Oh, just, just very just, easy. just an very easy, Aussie, easy bloke, man. Yeah, just just a real easy bloke. Like if you, you know, if your sister was like, "Hey, this is my new boyfriend," you'd be like, "Right, great. This guy's a, this guy's classic. This is what <laughs> I want. This is what I want in my life." So yeah, I, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm and he's big also on that. five foot seven, like Burfy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unassuming, yeah. great. Yeah, he's he was he was really chill. But um, yeah, nice of the club to invite me down to that, and then um, invite me to a little presentation from Craig and Bradley, which was fun. Yeah, I got to sit there in the bleachers and listen. It's in. probably worth actually talking to to that more. I I've um overheard some discussion about what was spoken about mm. in that meeting, and it's mm. probably worth you sharing some of that information wanna, with the faithful. What do you want to know? Well, I'd like to know what uh, Brad's opinion was on the list mm. and what his, uh, I guess, mm. the media team are asking, what questions did you ask him? Mm. I'm trying to remember what I asked him. Um, I actually, I mean, I asked him about Coxie because he was a friend of mine having spoken about him. And I kind of said, where do you think he's going to go? And he was, he was pretty honest. And he was kind of like, you know, we know he can play with, like with, we can play multiple positions. Um, and he basically said, you know, we've said to him, like, we want you to look at Mark Blitzars and go, that's where I want to be. Yeah. You know, in a few years time. So that was good. Um, I don't think we. Re- I really asked. Or I'm trying to remember. I think Did they re- say they were thinking of getting him on the Ronnie Coleman six thousand calorie <laughs> diet a day. No, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> not, not quite, not quite. Um, I'm, try- I'm trying to remember everything that happened. But yeah, one one of the questions I I, I asked, and I don't, like I'm not giving anything away here, but I sort of said, oh, um, you know, I was haven't played a practice match yet. How close do you think you are to knowing who the best twenty two is? And he made a really good point. And I think everyone is in the same boat where the first seven or 17 or 18 teams, everyone picks in the same. We all yeah. know who those players are. It's the next group that there's a real discussion on, you know, do we play an, you know, an extra defender here and move someone here? Or do we play the extra mid and move someone there? Mm. Or do we play that role player? And 
that's just going to be kind of a week in week out scenario. And yeah, I think we all kind of know who that group of players are. Yeah. So yeah, like that was interesting to have. And then, you know, it was just more of that kind of discussion that we've all kind of heard in, in the stuff that's been said about, you know, professionalism and trying to make sure that these players that yes, even though we are, yes, it's a win loss industry and we as fans are just going to want to see wins and that's it. But it's about these guys, you know, if they do have a bad week, that we're not dwelling on that for the next month and they're professional about it and they bounce back the next week and they just, you know, become more professional. That was a lot of the discussion that we sort of had. Mm. Um, I can't really remember any of the ones off the top of my head that speak about, but it was good. And it was it was cool to be invited and it was fun to sit in the room and awesome they put, did put, put my hand up like a school child and go, hello, sir, you know? Yeah. Um, and then like Vozo gave a presentation that he said was basically what they spoke about the AGM about where they see the club and what's been happening previously and where they see it now and yada, yada, yada. And that was cool. Mm. I mean, that's the first time I've met him. And Thoughts on Vozo? He seemed really nice and really switched on. So, yeah. I mean, you know, he didn't speak for that long. I think everyone just wanted to talk about the team, to be honest. Yeah. So that was yeah. kind of the vibe in the room. But yeah. it was cool. It was nice to be invited and yeah, it was fun to be there. So, mm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's Awesome that they did that. I mean, I know how difficult it's been for most podcasters or uh, sort of private, um, you know, media outlets to get involved with the club in more recent years. So it's good that they've yeah. opened up that media day. I think it's definitely changed a lot in the last two, two to three years. For me, at least. I can't speak for everyone else, but yeah. that's that's how I've sort of felt like, you know. I've always tried to get a guest on from mm. the club from like day one and it took me six years for them to finally do it. Yeah. You know? But I think that's just new people and understanding of what we do here and what everyone else does in this kind of space because there's lots of different shows from this club and other clubs as well who, mm. you know, just want to provide access. Yeah, and talk about a win team. Yeah, I mean, like, look, access is good. Like, access is good. I mean, I, I guess for me, like personally, like there are just questions that don't get asked by the you know, general media or the club media that I just want to know. I'm like, what does he think about this? Yeah. You know, that's just kind of how I think about it. I'm like, I'm just keen to hear what he has to say. Is there opportunities for Sash correspondence at press conferences to get down <laughs> post-game? I haven't got enough time. I haven't got enough time to do it. Post-game would be hard because I'd be probably a several pints deep yeah. rolling in there. And I don't know. I don't. How does that work though? Can anyone you, just rock up? No, you've you've got, a, you need an AFL media accreditation to do right. that. Which I, which I do not have. Accreditation? Accreditation, yeah. You have to do a course. No, no, no. You just, you, you fill in a form. Ah, oh, right. And then like, if you work for like Channel 7 or the Herald Sun, they obviously go, all right, cool. Here you go. Like we know who you are. Yeah. But when you start to move into our sort of space, they're like, oh, no. Yeah, you're a bit, uh, you're a bit, you're, you're, you're a bit nuffy. You're a bit nuffy fan. Yeah. And also like, <laughs> yeah. Also, like, I'm a fan. I just want to go to the game and have yeah. fun. Like, I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm working. Like, yeah, correct. You know, if I wanted to be a journo, I would have tried to be a journo, but I don't. I yeah. just want to talk shit and drink beers. So. Yeah, I uh, couldn't agree more. Yeah, but anyway, that was good. Thanks to the club for doing that. Um, it was good to be involved. So, anyway, I'll get back to hanging shit on the team now, as we as we usually do. Yeah. <laughs> someone someone commented after the St. Kilda game on our Facebook page, been like, are you getting too close and soft with the club? Because I said, yeah, just a practice game, let's not lose our heads. And I'm like... <laughs> and then, and then after the Geelong game, I'm like, I'm a bit upset that we still lost, and people are like, it was just a training man. Calm down. I'm yeah, like, you can't, I can't win. I can't you can't fucking win. win. You can't win. I can't win. I got berated by a few people on my match report for sure, <laughs> <laughs> and a few people defending. Like I didn't say anything. I didn't comment anything back. Yeah. But there was like half of the faithful being like, oh, it's such an overreaction, and then other people being like, he's just writing a report, leave him alone. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it is what it is. Let's talk Elijah Sardis. He's a, I don't know. I don't Thoughts know. on his two games that he played? Let's let's not even talk about the other game. Let's just talk Geelong. I'll be, I'll be I'll be honest. The St Kilda game is very hard for me to remember a lot because I had a baby in one hand the whole time I was watching. It's good. I can't remember anything either because I yeah. I've just blocked it out. Look mentally, I he he ticks most of the boxes in that he knows how to find the footy. He knows how to get in the right space. He can clearly run pretty well. And he shows a lot of talent, but there's just something about the way he kicks a footy that just makes me uncomfortable. Mm. And whether it looks it's, like he's falling unbalanced when he kicks, it's just like, like yeah, he's got a very awkward action. Yeah, and he's very young, and they can train that out of him. He look, kind of looks like Parish. Parish in him looks similar. Like you know how Parish 
would kick the ball last year mm. and he'd like kick it off his shin <laughs> and he would look really unbalanced that's when he I, was that's what I used to do, yeah. kicking the ball. <laughs> Similar. Yeah. yeah. I, look. So it's fixable. Yeah. Like there's part, of me that, there's part of me when like I see him turn it over and like, like I don't want to go too hard on a young guy. They're like, there's part of me see him turn the ball over as he did in the Geelong game. And I'm like, is, oh, is, is this the right kid? But then I, but then I see all the other stuff he's doing to actually win the footy and get the footy. I'm like, nah, he looks okay. So, yeah, I think he's gonna be a perfect Don's prospect, shocking with skills, yeah. but can find the footy. Find the footy. I don't know. Look, I, look. I mean, we'll get to our, we'll get to our team, but like, I, I think he's gonna be in the first twenty-two, just because of how well, like, good he is at finding the ball. But I think there's gonna be a few supporters who are, uh, you know. Money to get the mosh hair pills because they'll be pulling him out with a few turnovers this season. That's yeah. That's how I feel about him at the moment. But he's clearly got talent. So yeah. Yeah. What What about you? How do you feel? Overall, pretty positive about him. He definitely. The one thing that I've really appreciated was how well he worked back defensively in the Geelong game. Yeah. Which is not something that we've seen from both wingers, but having him and Dersma working back vigorously in defense was positive. He accumulated mm. most of his touches in the back half, mm. which is really good to see. I didn't think uh, all the murmurs that I heard from him was that he was a bit of, fr- of a front runner and he didn't work back defensively, but he seems to be working really hard to Brad Scott's game plan, which is working back mm. and providing that overlap as a, as a wing, a defensive wing, the skills side of things. I feel like just experience is probably, going to benefit him there. I mean, we've seen plenty of players that didn't have great skills to start their career. Joe Watson is probably the uh, notable, the biggest out of all. I'm not concerned. He's got enough there to warrant continuing playing him in the team. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm just scarred from just as a – I don't know. It's been a long time since I felt we've been a good kicking team. Yeah. And I think it's like the fundamental of the game, to be honest. And yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just frustrating to watch turnovers. It, it really irritates me. And I think, for, and yes, it is preseason. Yes, they're dusty and all that kind of stuff. But that was the thing that really annoyed me in those two practice games. Um, obviously, the St. Kilda game, we just didn't deal with the conditions at all. Um, I did an interview yesterday with, uh, oh, do I do it? I reveal? Oh, it's no big deal. I, Mark, Mark Robinson from the Herald Sun. So I interviewed him yesterday. Nice. And he was saying to me that he spoke to Wanganee Malira from St. Kilda for a, a column that he's doing. And according to Wanganee Malira, it was blowing an absolute gale down there. Were you there? Apparently the, apparently the conditions were awful is what he was saying to me. They were awful, but St. Kilda hit every single time. Yeah, exactly. So. They, they adjusted to it. We didn't at all. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just – just just turnovers. That's just, that's the thing that's upset me the most in these two practice games is just how bad some of them were. And there Be were a wary, of really, though. There are a couple of really bad offenders – but, yeah. but again, it is preseason. I understand. But the game, the game plan now that they are moving forward with, by the looks of things, is quite similar to Hawthorne era, which is quick, short forty-five kicks out of defence. Yeah. And then once you moving, get out of the arc, then you go. Yeah. And then you go right. And David Rath was there when they had their three peats, so there's no surprise. Comes with that when you're taking on those kicks is a higher degree of difficulty and, and more risk. So I feel like we are going to get punished on turnover. And if you don't like seeing turnovers, then you should probably not watch because there will <laughs> still be a big teething out period yeah. with the team. It's always going to happen. And we st- our bottom six is still really bad. That's what I've come to mm. realize. Like our bottom six – Maybe our bottom three, probably bottom four, mm. is is probably fairer. But you know, with Guelph running around, with Laverty running around, there's a few others there. They really hurt us mm. when they have the ball. Uh, so yeah, I think when you've got players like that and your bottom four just probably are teetering on AFL standard, mm. you, you're naturally going to find. That's the case. But he is hoping that they can clean it up. Yeah. Um, All right. We've got some prompts for a little bit of a sort of preview thing that we're doing. Um, Those interviews I've been recording that I'll be releasing. I think I think so premium listeners, you're going to get uncut versions, maybe some this week and then some next week. I'll figure out when we're doing. But next Monday, instead of a show like this, it'll be three interviews back to back. 
that I've put together. So these five questions I've asked all of these people um, who are a few media faces who do follow the Essendon Football Club. So um, I'll go first. Yeah. It's a big year for Jaden Laverty. <laughs> So nice. I I had him I'd had him as my person prior to the Ridley industry Ridley I was like Ridley industry Ridley injury. <laughs> um, so prior to that, but it was going to be about how he now has gone down the pecking order from the number one or two defender to three, four, or five, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, and I think this is a very big year for him to show can he make it in a slightly different role to what he's done prior. Does that mean he plays as a more mobile, small forward role? Does it mean we see him go forward again? Um, I'm not quite sure, but I think this is a big year for him to adjust. And I do wonder if there's a little bit weighing on his mind about how the fact that there's a new big guy on big money is rolled in. There's a young buck who's now ready to play, who've usurped him. Mm. And now he has to prove himself doing something else. And I do wonder if that's kind of weighing on him a little bit. Yeah. um, Because... Look, I expect him to play round one in the in the Ridley role, but he's got to prove himself again now because mm. you know a couple of years ago we were like, oh wow, how good's Laverty been? He's playing you know undersized all the time against these big monster key forwards, and he holds his own, does his best. Mm. But now you're not that player. That's not what we want from you anymore. So yeah. he's got to reinvent himself mm. um, and show his value for you know playing on. So I think it's a very big year for him. Thoughts. Jane Laverty on the wing. Ah, uh, does he have the tank? Can he run up and down all day, end to end? I mean, he's on, he's on the ground all day. He yeah. doesn't come off. Yeah, but I, I think there's a difference between being on the ground all day and playing. You he know, started his he started his career as a, as a winger. Did he with us? He played on the wing his first five or six games. Oh, I don't for remember, us, I don't remember that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if he has the tank to do it. I think I feel like the really good If he does is, have the tank, then. If he does have the tank, why not give him a shot? I mean, apparently we tried Jake Kelly there, which I think does, I just don't agree with at all. Um, but He can take a mark. He can kick a goal. He can defend. It's pretty much the criteria of a winger. He just can't kick. He can't really. He can't <laughs> like, hit a target. It's not very good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> which hurts. Well, that's, that, that but is, neither can Josh. Uh, Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly? No. Josh Kelly hits targets. What are you talking about? Not Josh Kelly. What's his name? The other Kelly for us. Jake Kelly. Jake Kelly. Yeah. Jake. Yeah. So, look, uh, uh, look I, I'm going to say no to the wing, but I understand where you're coming from. But I don't know. I don't know if I see it. So, mm. yeah. I don't know. I think he's going to play his best footy between one of the 50s, whichever, whichever one it is. Yeah. So, anyway, that's my big year for who are you going with or what are you going with? It's a big year for Harrison Jones. Is yep. my big year. Yeah, one year contract. It's do or die for Jonesy. Mm. He probably will get picked up by another club and be successful, like <laughs> we're seeing with uh, Patrick Voss at the moment over at Fremantle. But look, in in saying that, I really liked the way that he looked over the weekend. He Sorry. was doing all the tough things that you hadn't previously seen from him. He was chasing hard. He had a run run down holding the ball tackle in the forward 50. I think he had like two or three tackles inside the forward 50. And then he had a few others around the ground. He was making a contest and for large periods was playing on Tom Stewart, which mm. is not easy at all. The only thing that l- has l- let him down is that he was not taking marks. But that's a confidence thing for a lot of key forwards. The thing that I liked about Jonesy, though, he was getting in the right positions. Mm. And that's all you need to be doing as a centre-half forward is getting in the right positions, not getting out marked too regularly. So I've actually got hopes that he can get he can step up this year, but mm. it is a massive year for him. And, I, you know, I really wish him all the best. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I think, like... Look, he he really struggled in the St Kilda game, but the delivery was awful. Yeah, and shocking. Peter wasn't playing, which means that you know the caliber of or the caliber or type of defender he has to play against is very different. But watching that Geelong game, watching him get high up the ground and taking marks, I was like, I, I was like, I feel good about this. I feel mm. I feel calm and confident in what he's doing. I felt like we so, had a centre half forward finally. Yeah, so I I, I would really lo- like I'm really keen and hoping that we can see. Most games of the season where we see a right Langford Jones 
set up. Because if we've got the three of them there and they're all fit and they're all kicking goals, mm. there's no reason that can't be a decent kick forward set up, you know. Um, but I think it's for him, it's just when those one of the other two guys, particularly Peter Wright, goes down, that he draws the attention of a usually a much more physical defender. Yeah. Um, and he's if he's forced, I don't, yeah, I just don't think he's very good at playing super deep. Mm. Um, is sort of how I feel he is at this point in time, but. Yeah, there were some good signs in that Geelong game, and hopefully we see more of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number two. Uh, the greatest unknown for Essendon in 2024, uh, for me, is which of our small forwards are going to crack the team? Mm. Like, I think we all expect that Gresham will be playing week in, week out. I think that's an absolute given. My question for me is the other guys, because, look, I really like Menzi. I think a lot of us do. Um, I also like Hindy. Uh, Guelphie, I'm upset with right now, just from last week, but yeah. you know, he has his moments as well. But I think it's going to be, uh, and, and even you, know, you look at like an ADJ as well, is that which of those guys can be a... Take the ball by the horns. Take the ball by the horns. Maybe be, maybe have a 30-goal year. Maybe you just become that unbelievable pressure player mm. um, or even potentially both. Do you have Hind in there for round one? We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. Um, your, uh, your bro? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's, it's really hard. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I like what we've got with our key forwards right now. Like that was, they're not the best in the league, but a fit Peter Wright, a fit Kyle Langford, and a fit Harry Jones. I think it's okay. And I string think, cheese. I, and yeah, and Stringer there and Gresham around. I think it's not bad. And even like Perkins as well, floating around half forward. Like I think that's that's okay. Yeah. But I'm looking at the little guys other than Gresh and going, who's going to be the guy to deliver? Yeah. I feel like Menzies probably going to have first crack at it. Um, and then whether he can keep it up or not is, mm. is the question from there. So he's been poor. You reckon Menzi. in those two practices? Yeah? yeah. Yeah. And the reports are he's been pretty off the pace in all the intras. Yeah. Too. Okay. Second year blues, really, for him. Mm. He's still so young. That's the upside to men's. He's only yeah. twenty or twenty one, yeah. which is, which is great. No, look, I re- I really like him, and I I hope it's him who cracks the team. But yeah, there's still, I think there's still plenty of question marks. Um, who have you got? I was tossing up between players here, but I feel like the greatest unknown for Essendon in 2024 is. What do we get out of Archie Perkins this year? Mm. Very interesting one. He was really off the pace in both the practice matches, but by all reports has been absolutely tearing it up as a midfielder mm. in the practice games, which he's not didn't, playing as in... Didn't attend a centre bounce in the in that Geelong game. Which it doesn't look like they're going with him there. No. And he... I just don't know whether he offers us what we need at centre half forward. He to be very honest, why not play him on a wing instead? Yeah. He could play on a wing. He's got the tank. He's got the ball distribution. The only thing that he but there's a number of things that we he lacks, which is not being in the game enough. Half centre half forward or half forward flank is a tough position because yeah. you can find yourself in games just being you almost underneath the ball the yeah. entire time and it's being kicked over your head. And it seems like he struggles. Well, his whole career, he struggled to get into the game. But whenever mm. he gets the ball, he's one of our most dangerous yeah. players. He and looks, I, yeah, he looks great when he's got it, but doesn't get it enough. Doesn't get I it think enough. Is the criticism, yeah. And he's also not good defensively. No. The ball just rebounds out of our back line, and you know he's got a role to play there mm. as you know a, a defensive cover, which I just don't think that he does very well either. So my suggestion to the team would be don't play him at half forward because it just hasn't worked. Mm. If you're not going to play him in the midfield or rotate him through there, play him on the wing. Did he go to the wing at any point in those games? Like um, it's hard, like it's hard, I to, don't rem- think it's hard so. to remember all of them. I don't but, think so though, but yeah. I mean him coming out of the back line with the ball, you'd trust him. Him You've running. got like five people on the wing now. You've got Perkins and Laverde on the wing. <laughs> Dur's I'm gonna there, ditch, I'm gonna, I'll there. ditch I'll ditch Laverde and now that I've thought about <laughs> it, just get him around the ball. That's the point, yeah. right? And it, it, we've got such a tough midfield to crack into now with mm. Durham really taking what Archie's 
that was Archie's spot really for this year to take. Yeah. Being the bigger body player, and mm. they've gone with Durham for good reason because Durham does have better attack on the football than Perkins does. Yeah, Perkins does unfortunately play like a pretty boy at the best of times. Yeah, and he, he played some pretty good games though last year where he was in the middle and he was on Crips or he was on Dawson and he like I thought he played really well. But look, I th- I, th- I think for him. Uh, at some point this year, there will be an opportunity because sure. there's no chance that we're going to go through the year without someone getting hurt. Yeah, um, in that midfield group. So he's almost me- meandering come. in like sort of the Darcy Parish type era. You know how that, Parish was just the Ford era, yeah, the Ford era. Like you, you will eventually become a midfielder, but you're sort of teetering. You're getting 15 touches a game, maybe one goal or not. Mm. Everyone knows that you're probably better off being around the ball. So yeah, that's my greatest unknown is Archie Unper uh, Archie Unperkins. Archie <laughs> Perkins. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're dusting off a few cobwebs as well. Um Well, I was actually that's funny because I was gonna run with him for my next one. So I might have to just think on the fly and say, um I am most concerned. I'm most concerned. I'm most concerned about, well, I was going to say Archie Perkins. I don't want to go now. Do you have one? Maybe yeah. you go. Give me time to think about it because I was actually going to say. Jai was, Caldwell. Well, yeah, I was thinking about him. I'm concerned about what role does he play in the team. Mm. He's clearly a midfielder being played out of position. Is he just a second string mid? Is he just, and I is don't he know just a, if he is, he is a rotation and I don't there? know if he is a really good midfielder either. I, I feel like he's very good in and under, and but I just, I'm he's definitely not going to be a first string midfielder this year for us. So no. what what are we doing then? Are we going to keep continuing to play him? He's apparently a rotation, according to Setterfield's post game interview. He mm. said he mentioned six midfielders, and he said that. Caldwell was the last that he mentioned. So mm. clearly Caldwell's playing that half forward, rotate through the midfield bench type option. Because he went in that last quarter against Geelong when they rested a few of the guys. He yeah. went in for a little bit. Um, but he's just another one of those similar sized midfielders that we have too many of, which is, you know, 182, 183 centimetres. And I'm just not sure whether... What 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 role is he playing in the team at the moment? Are we gonna are we better served having a genuine forward in the team or a, or a genuine pressure forward instead of having that sixth midfielder? Or can he eventually go to the le- a level of what a side bottom you know could do and play that yeah. half half forward? The similar size. But look, wing, side yeah. side bottom players on the wing regularly, so maybe Caldwell goes on the wing too. Another winger. We're all everyone's on the <laughs> wing this year. We're all we're gonna have twenty wingers. <laughs> um, yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I know what you mean. He's just I, yeah. I, look, I think he is just you know the the backup sort of midfielder now that he's gonna be spending a bit of time around half forward. He may start off a wing every now and again, um, and then he's just gonna be in that kind of rotation mix to give guys chop outs when they need to. And then when someone inevitably gets hurt, because it will happen, um, he might see some more time. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's just a bit of an unknown for me. Um, yeah, he's just, he's just a real, he's just a real unknown. Um, I am most concerned. What am I most concerned about? Figuring out what you're concerned about right now. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm just looking through, like, I'm looking through my. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just go that way. I'm, I'm concerned. I like the more holistic approach. Yeah. Well, oh, that's the thing because like, I don't know. I've in these like last week or so, I've been doing a couple of these interviews. Like as I speak it, as I kind of verbalize it myself, I'm like, oh, is that how I feel? Is that how I feel? It's kind of like coming out. And there's part of it's like, I feel, and I guess I hope, that whatever our worst is this year is a lot better than our worst from last season. Mm. But does that mean we're going to win enough games? Yeah. I don't think so. Mm. And I hope I'm wrong and I want to play finals and I want to win finals, but I just think this is going to be another one of those years where yeah. we finish somewhere between 9 and 13. And can't defend transition. Yeah. That's, that's a concern oh, of mine. That's probably more of a concern than it's Caldwell. A concern. Um, yeah, it's always a concern. 
It's always a concern ability to defend transition. So who's that guy that is on Sports Day at five thirty on a Monday, and he's usually with Kane, Ian? Uh, I don't know. The, the is it Healy? Uh, what is his last name? Uh, Jared Healy. Jared Healy. Yeah. Jared. Yeah, I've met Jared. Yeah, Jared's regularly down at the gym where I uh, their office is in our building. So I saw Jared today, and I said, "Dons were looking better over the weekend." He said, "Yeah, they were." But they still can't defend turnover. Yeah, and I said, "Yep, yeah, you're that's, absolutely right." And I think that well, that's and that's why I'm well. Actually, yeah, maybe I'm most concerned about our turnovers because we just get punished. We just get absolutely punished. Yeah, by those turnovers. It was still apparent against Geelong that we seem to be such a front running team when mm. we get the ball, and as soon as we turn it over, I feel like there are so many players that I don't know why so many players need to run up like a wave mm. to support the attack. I feel, but it does genuinely feel like everyone is completely out of position when we turn the ball over. That's it. We're all yeah, we're all committed to the score, but we're not committed to go the other way. And I don't know. I think there are just a few guys in that team, and it, I think a lot of it is that kind of second string midfield group that we've been speaking about, who they get sucked into the ball, yeah, a lot. And there's a lot of times where people don't hold position when they need to hold position, yeah. And we've seen it at its worst. Um, we have three guys who go for it and, and somehow none of them come out, come away with the ball. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, that's going to be the the problem for me. Yeah. With those guys. Um, the best inclusion to Essen's team will be, I'm going to say Ben McCock. I think he'll be the biggest change this year. Um, I think he's going to, I don't know, I think he's just going to change the way that we've been playing against those big key forwards. Yeah. Because we've struggled. Mm-hmm. We've really struggled. Yeah. And I would like to think and I hope that it means that we're not just, you know, we're not having to find a way to win a game when the opposition key forwards kicked five goals on us, mm. you know, and it's more, you know, if it does go down, it's a one-on-one, there's still a good chance he might actually win it or halve it at least rather than just lose it. It yeah. seemed to be the way it was last season, the year before. So. Are we erring on potential Twin Towers merch and having <laughs> Mackay and Reid <laughs> as merch T-shirts? That's 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 horrible. We we all, we all know what happened to the Twin Towers, so maybe maybe let's not go down that way. Maybe <laughs> that is very true. Yeah, maybe let's not go down that road. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I yeah, I, I think he's going to be a big, big improvement. Um, and yeah, surely, hopefully, him and. He already has made a massive difference in those yeah. two games. Yeah, you, you you can tell, and you know he, inter- he intercepts the ball pretty good. So who mm. knows? Maybe he's the one who does the covering for the Riddler. Yeah, as we hope. What about you? I'll go to the other end. Uh, I'll say Gresh. Yeah, I feel like Gresh will provide us with regularly force force goal involvement to game. Yeah. I mean, it seems like he. In each of the two games he's played, it looks like he's had more than four. Mm. I mean, having any player in your team that averages over 20 disposals and I think it's like one and a half or two goals a game. It's great. Is elite. And it just goes to show how much we have missed Tipper. Yeah. Like he is, he is such a generational talent. The ability that he had to create goals and score them, I feel like it's not underappreciated, but I was thinking about it the other day. And to have someone that, you know, I wouldn't say resembles him, but in that same role that can create opportunities, has a high footy IQ and can kick goals, Mm. has really been, we've been looking to fill that role that Tipper has left us. And, you know, we should get at least 20 goals out of Gresh this year. I mean, statistically, we should get, if he plays all games, at least 30. I think 30 is going to be the benchmark for him. I think he's only done that... Twice what a career. difference that makes, though, right? Yeah. To our team having having uh, an extra thirty goals from a yeah. small forward, it's yeah. huge. Well, yeah. So his, his his score involvements in so in every season he's averaged above four per game, and in one, two, three, four, five, six seasons he's rated above average for score involvements. One average, and then one. Sorry, two average. So he's not below average. He's not elite, but that's pretty handy. Yeah, very. And yeah, I guess if he just you know is a bit more accurate in front of goals, then we'll be pretty happy. Yeah, we'll be pretty happy with how he's going. Essendon will finish 
tenth on the ladder because we're not that good yet. Yeah, and I think I think we'll see improvement, and I think we'll see a lot of these people now who are like, oh, you know, Brady Brady comes on, this guy comes on, I think wins a few games, but I still just feel that we're just lacking a little bit. A little bit of extra. But then again, like, it's an absolute lotto. Yeah. Fifth to, what is it, 13 or 14? Yeah. Like, roll the dice. That's what's going to happen, you know? And yeah. I don't know. I did, I, That's how it is every year. Yeah. I don't look, <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. But I don't know. You, you might have been listening to, um, I actually had SCN on the way here. And I was just listening. And your mate, Jared, Jared said, made a very good point. And he just says, in that group of, he said, there's always going to be one team every year who just has a shocking run with injuries, yeah. and that can be the, that can be them either making the <clears throat> bottom of the eight or not playing finals. And I think that's just what it's going to be: is that there's going to be one of those teams from, you know, five to what was it, thirteen, mm. who is just going to have an absolute shocker. Yeah. Um, hopefully, it's not us. Yeah. But then, you know, if it's a team of fish in the eight. There's a spot up for grabs. Mm. Hopefully, it may be the team that takes it. But yeah, sadly, I am pessimistic. Yeah. And I don't think we're playing finals. So that's mine. What about you? I'm very similar. Essendon will finish 10th on the ladder because of injuries and just not trusting our list to be able to stay on the park. All of our good players in the past four or five years and our up and coming emerging players, including new inclusions like Gresham and Mackay and Dersma all have injury clouts above them and have had extended periods on the time on the bench over multiple years. So I just think it would be very lucky for us to be able to have all of our best players on the park for 80% of the year. Mm. And we are significantly exposed as a team when two or three of our players that are in that top half go down with injury, we lose a lot of structure. And we saw last year the evidence around, you know, what what the results look like. So, yeah, we're getting there. I think incremental improvement this year. We might get one more win on the board. What would that take it to? 11. 10, 11? 11, yeah. Yeah, 11's a pretty good year. Like, I'd be pretty happy with 11 wins. Yeah, but it's not finals. That's just another year. But look, if we are fit and we have players on the park, then I I, I think the sky's the limit. It'd be nice. It would be nice. What did we get last year? No, we had 11 wins last year, so it'd be 12 wins. Well, yeah. 12 wins, well, actually, no, it was 12 and a half is what got Sydney in. Also, that percentage was shocking. So, yeah, I don't know. If, if we're not getting blown out by 10 goals, then maybe we will make yeah. the eight. So, that's it. Um, let's take a little breather. Uh, we'll come back and we'll pick our round one team. And uh, you can let us know what you think, listeners, back after this. Welcome back. Part two of our season preview. And we're going to pick our team surround one. Now, I think we'll have a lot of similarity and then as soon as we get to the bench, I reckon it's going to be... Or the wing. Or the wing, yeah. Sorry, I, f- <laughs> I forget that you're naming 10 wingers. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to there and we'll see what happens. Um, all right, let's start with the the full backs, so the back three. Um, you can go first. I'll let you take the new ball. All right, full back, I had Zach Reed. Yep. And then uh, the two back pockets I had were Laverty and McGrath. Okay. Okay. Um, I've gone, just because, like, you know, it sort of floats, I've gone with uh, Ben Mackay fullback, and then my back pockets is uh, Zach Reed and Andrew McGrath. Halfbacks? Before we continue, who is, is are you just putting Mackay there? but he will play on the centre half forward or are you not playing Mackay or Reid on the centre half forward? I don't know. Like, I don't know if I kind of look at it in that traditional sense as it sort of used to be. It's you know just what more I mean? you're just, just putting them there. Well, they, I, don't know. Well, I they, feel like that's actually how they would present the team though. Yeah, well, that's they, it. They're kind of the two, like usually the two deepest defenders most of the time. Yeah. They'll take the two biggest guys. If one of them is pushing up the ground, so be it. They sort of yeah. go with them. But, you know, they're the ones who will be playing on the number one, number two key forward yep. so yeah i'm not thinking about it in too much of a literal sense, sense. Yeah. yeah 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 
Uh, so halfbacks, I've got Martin Mackay and Redman. So same but different. I've got Martin Redman and Laverty. Yeah, because so our back six that, are all the same. That's the We're same. In yeah, yeah. And I think I think most people would probably have had theirs pretty similar. Um, obviously with Ridley out, that might change for some people. But this is where it might change a bit. So talk me through your center line. Purely for semantics, as you were saying earlier, I have Durham on the wing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Believe it or not, which is hilarious given yep. the conversation that given, we've had. Given everything we've just said, yep. They The only reason why I have him on the wing is because that's how they've presented the team over the past two weeks mm-hmm. is still having him on the wing. Uh, Merritt in the middle and then Dersma on the other wing. Okay. Okay. So I've gone uh, Dersma on one wing. I've gone Sam Durham in the centre. Yep. Because I think that's where he's going to be playing. Mm-hmm. Um, although, to be honest, I think it's the first bounce. I feel like it might be actually centre field, but anyway. And then I really mulled over this one. <laughs> I'm sure I gave you a lot to think about. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I was, like, I really thought about it and I'm like, who knows? Like, you know, will Martin push up and play there sometimes? Or some of the other guys with name go there? But I've decided to put Elijah Sardis on the wing. Really? Yeah. Okay. So he's starting on the ground in your team. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Even even all the things I said about him, I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of looking at everyone else and I'm like, you know, are you going to – like, Sheil obviously is not going to be playing. I don't, I don't think I'd start Coldwell there, although he might. Cox, maybe, but probably not. Yeah. So I've just gone with him. All right. Half forward line. Perkins, Jones, Langford. Okay, so I've gone Perkins, Jones, Gresham is, yep. is, is mine. So pretty similar. Uh, and then the full forwards. Gresh, Terminator, Peter, and Stringer. Yeah, same, but swap Langford for Gresh is sort of how I've got it. So same front six. So pretty much the whole team on the starting team is the same, yep. aside from Sardis. Yeah. Uh, followers, I'm assuming we've probably got the same three. But did you have merit in the center? Yes. Yeah, so I've gone Goldstein, Merritt, Parrish. Yeah. And what have you got? I've gone, so instead of having Sardis on, I've elected to have Setterfield on the ground. Okay. So I've yep. got Parrish, Goldstein, and Setterfield as okay. the followers. Yeah. Okay. Now here's where we'll probably actually change it up. Yeah. It might be a bit different. So talk me through your interchange. So I've got the uh, 2024 concern. On the bench, which is Caldwell, yeah, uh, Cox, Hindy, and Sardis. Okay, interesting. So, I've also got Jai Caldwell. I've set a field because I started Sardis on the ground. Yep. I also put Cox in, and I probably didn't have him there a week ago. Mm. But I feel like I don't know. I. I I feel like he was okay in the Geelong You've got to game. play him. You've just yeah, got to play I, I, him. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think they're just going to play him. You've got to um, play him. And then I've I've gone John Menzi. Ooh, okay. Yeah, like I know. I'm, yeah, like, no, but it's, it's either Hind or Menzi really that you're picking there. Yeah. I mean, did you have Guelph in your considerations? No, nah, no. Nah, Hind was the far better mm. uh, forward for me, even over Menzi. Mm. I feel like Menzi probably does get picked purely on form from last year because mm. he kicked, what, over 20 goals for us. Yeah. But some of Hines' defensive work was elite last week. It was good. Really got back to cover the team. The Bork on Danger. Whew. Hilarious. Jeez, that was good. That was nice. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. I feel like there'll be a few games where one of them is in and the other one doesn't play. Yeah, I. It was that was a real tough one for me. And I also considered whether or not they – like you, you might go a bit of a small lineup. I think because because of Ridley's absence, I think Ridley's absence is a good thing for Cox. I think it means he's more likely to get some game time. He may play more of a key-ish role yeah. down the back line as opposed to being, you know, a winger. Um, So that was kind of why I had him in the side. Whereas I think if Ridley was in, I don't know if I'd have Cox in my team because I think that would have a push down effect. And I'd and it would also obviously determine what I would do with Laverty. I'd probably still play Cox and I'd boot Laverty. Okay, just because for the bene- benefit of the club, I feel like just getting game time into Cox mm. is going to be more beneficial for us in the long term. It's harsh on Laverds, but as I said, 
I just don't think that his form warrants him to be in the team. And a lot of people would say the same thing about Cox, but Cox is a bit untried at the moment. And we Mm. know, we don't know what his ceiling could be. We've seen glimpses and I certainly can say the glimpses of his ceiling look higher than what Laverde's are. Um, who would be your sub? So I've got Nick Hind as my sub. Yeah. Him or I would say. Well, you've got Hind, so who are you playing? So, yeah, it's it, it. you'd kind of be wanting to look at that. Maybe Guelph could mm. be a good sub. He's a you bit would, of a... You would pick Menzi? It's either him or Menzi, really. The only reason why... I, Guelph is a good option is because he can play in multiple roles mm. and he does offer more flexibility than Menzi does. So does Hind, which is why Hind is probably a better, safer bench option, uh, sub option, mm. and you'd, you'd be safer starting Menzi because if Menzi's not playing well, you just sub him out. Yeah. But Hind can play anywhere on the ground, really, mm. maybe aside from on ball. Mm. So, yeah, may, maybe you are right. that it, Now that you think about that sub, you're like, mm, maybe Hind is probably the smarter option. Yeah, I, I think he's more flexible. I mean, Guelphy was probably in the conversation until he had that set shot against Shalom, and then I was just like, not nah, bin. Just, yeah, it just was bin. not a good uh, representation of his confidence going for the no. check side. But also it's like maybe you're just trying something out in yeah. a practice game yeah, I because don't know. it's a practice game. Like, I don't know. But, yeah, like he's... He's in that group for me that I think are really fighting for spots because, yeah. like, Menzi, Hind, Cox, I mean, you can probably throw Laverde in there, although he's going to be obviously getting a few games with Ridley's absence. You can probably throw Sardis into that mix as well. Um, you could make an argument for Caldwell as well, that they're really going to be pushing for those, yeah. those remaining spots because Ben Hobbs is going to be fitted again at some point and he's going to push – try and push someone out of the team. At some point this year, Nate Caddy will get a game, whenever that may be. She'll come back. She will be fit at some point. I mean, who knows with she'll Draper will come back. Draper will come back. Did, did you, did you, uh, did you at any point consider the two rucks, the gold, or the Goldstein Bryan scenario? Uh, no, I actually didn't consider it. But now that you're making me think about it, I, I just think we're too tall. We're just way too mm. tall. We, we looked quite one paced against St Kilda for the first time in a really long time. We've always been a fairly quick team. But think about it. You've got Reed, Mackay, Goldstein and Wright mm. and Cox in your team who are all over 200 centimetres. That is a very, very tall team. Yeah. So I, at this point, no. But when Draper is back, definitely playing Goldstein and Draper. Yeah. And that just means, unfortunately, Jones – probably makes way. Yeah. Jo- well, not maybe Jones because Jones is a center half forward and you're not playing him there, but it would be probably you like Langford or Stringer. And that's, that's a tough call. Jeez. But yeah. when you think about it that way, or maybe you end up playing, you play Stringer up the ground as a center, as a center half forward and you take as a flanker mm. and you bin Perkins. Yeah. Yeah, you could. I know. I do. Yeah, I do worry just about being too tall and not having much of a, you know, defensive presence in that forward line. Um, yeah, like, which, I mean, which, looks... I, which I still don't think we even have with when we play the smaller, the smaller lineup. Yeah, um, like I think a lot of pressure is going to be on Gresham. Stringer, funnily enough, laid the most tackles inside fifty. Well, he did at Geelong. the beginning of last year as well. Yeah. Beginning of last year, he I remember Mert. Absolutely frothing over Paco <laughs> having a huge amount of defensive acts. He was yeah. like leading the comp, I yeah. think, for like defensive forward pressure acts, and then he got injured, obviously. So yeah. um, he's hilarious. So when you see a string of sprinting, mm. there's no, there's I've never seen someone look so straight. Like his upper body mm. looks like a surfboard, yeah, with these like tiny little legs <laughs> that just flap around. Yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah, look, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, but um, yeah, I'm bloody keen. I'm bloody keen for that game. Uh, all right, let's let's wrap up with some quick predictions. Um, who's winning the best and fairest for you? Parish. Okay. Guy well, Country Mile. I'm gonna say Nick Martin. Ooh. We've barely spoken about him tonight, but yeah, I think that halfback spot's primed for him to yeah to do something pretty special. Mm-hmm. And he still kicked two, playing off halfback. Most score involvements as well. Love that. Yeah, it's a good call. Him or 
Parish, I reckon. You know. And Merritt. Yeah. Merritt's, Merritt's, I'd love for Merritt's Merritt. a reliable bet. I would love for Merritt to win it again, but mm. share it around. Uh, breakout year. Zach Reid. Zach Reid. Nice. I'm going to say Nate Caddy. <sighs> That'd be nice. <laughs> and then the full Messiah complex begins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The new Messiah. The new Messiah. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to predict? We've already done our like other ones. Is there anything else? How many listeners are still currently listening to us right now? Oh, zero. <laughs> Obviously zero. There's no one here. No one here. You can hear an echo in here now. <laughs> um, Jesse, good first pod. Nice to dust the cobwebs off. Nice to get behind the microphone, get into Castaway Studio, hang out with Derek. It's good to be here. Uh, D-Rod. Good to be back. Um any final thoughts from you before we pack it up for a night? Just enjoy the tranquility of not watching Essendon <laughs> when four points are up for grabs and enjoy living in this moment and don't look forward to round one Yeah, because it will most likely disappoint you. <laughs> nah, get around. It'll be fun. Nah, get down. Get as many. I'll be going. I'll, I'll be, be there going. as well. I actually bought a membership for the first time in my life this year. Have you never had a membership? No. Nah, never. Really? No. Nah. Wow. Never. I always had, dad had corporate seats at Eddie had for oh, years. I know, right? Lucky Bloody me. Yeah. Anyway, I don't have them anymore. And all my mates are MCC, which I don't have either. And was running out of ideas for dad's birthday presents. So I just pulled the trigger and got us a couple of memberships. That's a, that's a great gift. That's the gift that keeps on giving until it doesn't. <laughs> Correct. Um, yeah, no, that's good. I'll, I'll I'll be going round one. I reckon probably be a pretty good crowd, which will be all right. Do you have a membership? Yeah, I have a membership. Yeah. I have a membership. Well, Dad, I can't remember what age it was. How, I don't know. Probably like late teen years, Dad started buying me, me and him a membership, so we'd go together all the time. And then around, it was probably just around the time of the saga where Dad was just like, nah, I'm not doing that anymore. And then there was a couple of years it was, it was probably one. Was, I don't know. It was somewhere in that period, but it was probably a year where I didn't buy one, and then mm. I was like, "I'll start buying my own one." But then there was also dad being like, "You're in your mid twenties now. Come on, cop up some cash. You Surely, know, you know, sort, sort yourself out." Um, but yeah, no, I reckon I've, I've probably had one for eight or nine years since then. I've been paying myself. Yeah, things like, like I actually like I really use the actual seat because like, yeah, I, like, surely I, I, you got MCC. You usually yeah, I'm usually I'm usually with, with, I'm usually, I'm usually with the toffs at the G, and or then, uh, you get the seats from uh, uh, Ticket, Blaster. Ticket Blaster. Our good friends are they still involved this yeah, year? Yeah, I've been talking to Josh. We got, we'll, we'll we'll make an announcement um, in the coming coming week or so. Um, but yeah, that's um. So yeah, you know, I'm 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 fortunate enough that that's it. But I just I just you know. I feel like I should give my give a bit give a bit of hard earned. Yeah, it gives. I feel like it gives me the right to say all the things that I do. <laughs> Correct. I can't sit here and not be a member and like you are hang more shit entitled on players. when you've given them your money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Entitled. So me. I'm already entitled and I haven't given them my money. So just wait <laughs> for a big year, faithful. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you didn't get a phone call for the bomberthon don don the whatever today. They no, did. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, I've already paid my membership. I would have loved a phone call. <laughs> yeah. G'day, boys. How are you? What are you? What's going on? <laughs> um, thanks, everyone. Thanks, listeners and viewers, for tuning in. Um, if you're a premium subscriber, you have three chats coming to you between now and next Thursday. Not Thursday this week. This what is it? The eighth, seventh? Not Thursday the seventh. Between now and Thursday the fourteenth, you got three interviews that are coming your way. Um, I'm not sure how I'll space them out. I could just give you all one go one night, but I might space them out. Um, and then if you're not a premium listener, next Monday those three interviews, a uh, edited version of those, will be available to you on the Monday night on wherever you listen or on YouTube as well. And then coming into that Thursday, we start our first premium preview on the Thursday, the 14th, and then two pods a week from there on until the end of the season. I'm trying to do some more videos for the YouTube channel. Um, I'm hoping to record one tomorrow when I have some free time away from work and my family. Um, I think that's about it. Well, thanks, everyone. Get, get excited, get down to round one against Hawthorne and go Dons. Go the Dons.